This is Jupiter at Night Prototype Episode 3 in 3, 2... Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. You know, Jeremy, you know what this is? This is like a prototype. Yeah, well, we did prototype last night, so let's get a new name tonight. Maybe a, you want to claim beta? We'll go beta. Yeah. This is a beta of Jupiter at Night. What is Jupiter at Night? It's a show that we're still in the process of forming. It's going to be a nightly show, Monday through Thursday, at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live, where we'll wind up the rest of the day. We'll sort of cap it off cover news stories that either don't fit on all of our other shows, maybe the things like the BP oil spill, Apple iPhone 4.0, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Or stuff that either we personally find interesting or that Definitely. you guys find interesting. See, we're live. We're going to have a big community involvement. But then the other nice thing is, is while we're live every night, the show will also be out immediately after we're done with the show. It will, you know, as close to immediately as the internet allows for. And you could always catch the show in the morning on your way into work or whatever mm -hmm. you like. I'd actually also like to mention that it won't always be us two. It won't always be Chris. Yep. It won't always be, like, the first one was Chris and Alan. And then uh, we're also going to try with me and Alan. Mm -hmm. And we might have to do some episodes where it's just one of us and we don't know who. We're going to rotate so. around. <laughs> but the idea is, is we want to be able to... The show itself should always remain almost sort of... You know, comfortably the same. Yeah, the idea is it's kind of just Jupiter Broadcasting's nighttime show, and it's just sort of a, a hangout vibe with you, the community, and uh, with, we'll talk about some of our, our interesting stories. Before we go on, uh, I wanted to give you an update on Flash on my Motorola Droid. I've got the uh, sort of the old school Droid here that was the first Droid that came out, and um, I, I recently got Froyo on it, the uh, new the new fancy Android release. That's just a fancy name for the new Android OS, yep. right? Yeah, okay. the newer, better, faster OS. Okay. And uh, the because uh, I don't keep up on that, I'm not a smartphone guy right now. It's it's Froyo is kind of like the one everybody's kind of looking forward to because there's a lot of speed improvements and and things like that. All right. So I uh, once I once you go to Froyo, you can also then go to Flash. You can get Flash 10 on on your device. So I went ahead and tried that out, and you know this has been one of those big points of contention. For Apple and the iPhone is right. Apple won't let Flash on the iPhone, right. and you know uh, the Android marketplace is open, so Adobe can put out whatever they want, and people can install it if they want to. How's it working for you? Because you made me try this out earlier before we just started oh, what'd you recording. Think? Well, I went to like three or four different websites, and I'm not sure it worked with any of them. I know it worked on the test site. Yeah, Adobe's yeah. Flash test, but. Yep. None of the other sites look like they were working. So. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly been my experience too. Is it? It works on the test site well. Uh, it, it works a little bit. Like when you first opened up the web page, that was mm -hmm. Flash that was playing. Oh, okay. Uh, so it works a little bit, but I think part of it is, and this has been reported by some of the nicer Android handset ma uh, users, but I think the Droid is just a little underpowered. I mm -hmm. do have it overclocked mm -hmm. to a gigahertz, uh, so it. But there are better. There are better phones that are just faster, the like the Nexus there. One and the HTC Evo. That is an adorable picture of your son. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do like the widgets you can put on the Android desktop. That's <laughs> that's really slick. They have uh, they have they have one of the widgets you can put on here. Is, I was going to see if I have a picture of it, but I guess I don't. Uh, but on the home screen of the of the Droid, you can put picture frames and things like that, which ah. is always neat. Um, so interesting enough, I it. Not really all that practical. I guess I like so having it. the bottom it, line is, yeah, it, it's there Yeah, for all the good it does you. I, I will go out of my way not to use it. Really? But if, I, if I'm if i in a pinch where I really need really need to do it for something, you know, maybe this, like, I somebody just sent me a link to a site the other day that was completely done in Flash. I would have liked to have been able to at least get a render of it. Mm -hmm. Then I might have given up and decided not to go for it because the, the camera app is one of the things they improved a lot in Froyo. You were just Jeremy over here was just playing with I, the camera. No, you put it down in the barcode scanner open, and I oh. tried to close it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the buttons are touchy. Um, so why don't we move on now, switching gears from Android, and talk. This is a really, really serious news story for and it iPad hits users. close to home because it does. it's what we're doing for... Our soundboard we is right now on an iPad. <laughs> and now this story comes out from the New, New York Times. I think it was actually originally broke uh, from the... Folks over at Gawker, the same people that own Gizmodo that mm -hmm. broke the uh, iPhone it 4 story. It came to them um, courtesy of an independent security forum called 
Goatsy Security. Yep. And uh, they specialize in exposing security uh, vulnerabilities. Security holes, you might say, Jeremy. Mm, I'm, I wouldn't. You might say this goat Some say. Some people might. Security. <laughs> uh, so this is some pretty disturbing stuff. It's, they've, got, they've got every AT&T device on their 3G or otherwise network has an uh, email address that you could send a message to that would be delivered as a text message, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. So now uh, this hacker group supposedly has 177,000 of the iPad 3G owners' device email addresses, along with the device IDs, the IDC. And some of those that they can link together. Uh, maybe all of or them. The, I'm sorry, the ICC ID. ICC ID. Now, and using those ICC IDs, they might even be able to... I think... Yeah, the, the article goes on to assume that they might be able to somehow track to your actual physical location. Yeah. They'd have to have some pretty substantial access to the cellular network to get that information. And going over how they actually did this attack, uh, how did they get this information from AT&T on, on, uh, on iPad users? How did they get the ID, their email addresses, unique things like that? Uh, it, it actually looks like a case of complete stupidity, reading through this article. Um, really nothing that so somebody with a... Hard? Well, here's what it is. So on your iPad, if you have a 3G iPad, on the device, you can sign up for AT&T's 3G service or change your plan and, and turn it on or off, check your, check your bandwidth usage, because it's, no, it's non-contractual to sign up for when you want data, kind of a service. Okay. And that's all embedded inside the settings menu. So when you bring that up, what they're doing is they flip open a little little HTML embedded window, and it's an, it's an ajax -y website on AT&T's website. And it gives you all your account information, and it gives you live updates as you check your different information and you add stuff. And it's a really nice little app that they deliver via a little embedded web browser. Um, now, the problem is, is in order to make it a really smooth, slick experience, mm -hmm. what they do is they pass in the URL, you know, they pass what would normally be information you'd never show up in a URL. They pass things like the device's email address and its ICC ID inside the URL itself because in this enclosed iPad settings environment, that URL is never exposed, so they don't care that that's being shown. But, but all you have to do is set your web browser to have an iPad agent string and then go to and then know the URL to that to that sign up page and now all of a sudden you're getting all the information. What? So what the hackers did was they wrote a PHP script that just rotated through the different possibility of incarnations, and then when they when it got a bite, kind it got in, course. got all the information, and saved it. So that's why they that's why it took them so long. Even after they only got 177 of them, even after getting access, and AT&T was many, able to stop them. You know approximately how many iPads are on the market, right? Well, we don't know how now. many 3G raw, okay. but there's over two million sold. So there's okay. a good chance that, that a lot of those are the 3G units because that's really when their sales kicked off. Right. So it's kind of a so really... So these guys weren't even like expert hackers. They just kind of took a brute force approach and were able to basically trial and error yeah. to find all this information. Yeah, interesting enough, too. Check this out. Tucker D. in the chat room here at the live show is saying mm -hmm. that uh, they had a contest at school, and that's how they won their contest by, by doing a maneuver like this. This isn't unusual stuff, and I'm so surprised. Like, as soon as I started reading this, this is stuff I would check for in a security audit for my clients. For the, on their website. Yeah. And so I was really surprised. And so this well, Goatsay okay. security firm isn't like some sort of elite firm. It's kind of a basic generic thing. With that name? You think they're professionals? <laughs> they're looking for holes, dude. <laughs> I think they're hobbyists. Yeah, they're definitely <laughs> hobbyists. Uh, so but I, no, okay, you as an iPad owner, uh, am I worried? It's one thing Not for a, a firm like some of the places you work for are like medical offices where it would be a big deal, but you're only exposing maybe... Oh, I'm sorry. It's 114,000. three dozen people. Right. This, this is 114,000. 114,000 yeah. 14, consumers that yeah. didn't even know that there were security risks. You know, this yeah. is the same type of people that go on Facebook and forget to check the privacy and, and settings. What's, and what's pretty wild is uh, some of the names that have been exposed, and this is all AT&T confirmed, by the way. Uh, some of the names that have been exposed are like government officials, people, well, one of the White House advisors, uh, people in the uh, Senate. I mean, big names uh, have been exposed here, and that should never get out. That kind of stuff is too. When you have got to wonder if Apple, if Steve Jobs is on the phone right now with somebody over at AT and T, giving them a whole new hole in their head. Well, you know, this is the kind of thing that might finally prompt Apple to switch to a different carrier in different maybe. parts of the state. Maybe. Or country. Or maybe that's already in progress, but... We can hope. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's um, 
it's an interesting development because you realize this kind of private information you're completely giving out. I mean, that's a whole nother level of private information. With those email addresses, they can now do directed spam mm -hmm. um, to live accounts. And oh boy, yeah, that's what I fear. I don't really fear about them hacking anything else. I just fear about getting spammed. All right. Well, let's move on to the next story because uh, this next one, that one's a bit of a downer. Um, oh, just by the way, if you haven't seen the uh, iPad setup screen, this is what it looks like here. This is a little embedded widget that comes up, and this is an a this looks like a nice app, but it's an HTML page, and uh, you can see how in this screenshot you do not see the URL. Yes, right. But if you change the user agent, and that they'd still render that up. So that's how did nobody just think of that before when they were creating the thing? Um, I have no idea. How I just don't know. That boggles my mind that they couldn't even imagine that. <laughs> well, it's what, what's interesting it's is fail, I, I, fail. I made the assumption <clears throat> that the email address was the device's email address, but reading through these, these are not these are these are people's direct private email addresses, mm -hmm. um, including Gov .army .military Yeah, US? Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. DARPA how, Why would AT and T? How could AT and T? Oh, right. Because you sign up, you sign up for the three G service with your, oh man, NASA.gov. I mean, oh, they, that on. means they have my. That means they have my actual. That means email if you address. got hacked, yeah, then they've got your home address. Awesome, huh? Yeah. Hopefully they don't have the password. <laughs> but yours isn't that hard to guess, though. So. Probably not. No. <laughs> hey, you know what? But Spoon is a perfectly fine password. <laughs> Spoon! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next story for tonight is, uh, Jeremy, you saw a little birdie out there that uh -huh. was tweeting about a new possible uh, Mortal different. Kombat You know, I follow relaunch. Um, several different big media folks on the, on, on the Twitter. Okay. And this thing got Twittered up and Facebooked to me at least five or six times today. This is really? a new trailer for... Um, well, it's not really a trailer. No, it's, it's like, um, it's like a, a concept, concept film. Yeah. yeah, a concept short, yeah. exactly. Of uh, of a more nitty gritty real Mortal Kombat. Yeah, a remake, a, a reboot of yeah. the Mortal Kombat franchise done in sort of a realistic, pseudo realistic. I mean, it's still Mortal Kombat, and there's some weird it's stuff like, going it's on. It's like it's like if you kind of brush Mortal Kombat with strokes of Dark Knight. You know yeah, what I mean? Like that. Bit. Yeah, like where you get Dark Knight a little, a little more real. Yeah. Like this guy that you just probably saw on the screen. His face is all um, malformed and everything. But the backstory that they give on this is that he. Uh, was a doctor, lost a patient, and it caused him to go insane, and now he's done a bunch of surgical modifications on his own body. Wow. Uh, so, uh, realistic, sort of. I suppose. But, yeah. The fight scenes look pretty good. Um, basically, they're being shopped around to primarily Warner Brothers right now. This is an interesting way that people are doing this now, is they are going through the trouble of this really high-end production quality mm -hmm. that, you know, really looks quite great. <laughs> and they're putting it up on YouTube, letting it get a YouTube. This is so. This has had 1.4 million views. Okay, yeah. so this is a serious. This has had some serious it's views. Like, and they're letting one five now. They're letting their exposure and views on YouTube bring the contracts to them. Yep. This is, there, the, there are several groups now that have gotten record deals and movie deals by mm -hmm. doing this. I was just pointed out yesterday to a young musician, like 13 years old, who was signed to a major uh, agent through putting up a, a video of a talent show on Man. YouTube. I wish we I could mean, make that work for us. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah, places... Um, that would be like great. Oprah and um, uh, Ellen DeGeneres have also done this. They've been tipped off to, like, cool music acts from YouTube that have ended up on the show, ended up getting signed. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like a... This is a new wave. I mean, these guys... They're doing something right. Yeah. We it's gotta, a great way to distribute yourself out we there. We've got to get in on that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, we're wrapping up here at Jupiter at Night, and we want to hear your ideas. What should we make a nighttime show at Jupiter Broadcasting? What should it contain? Uh, do you want more calls, or should it be more, more stories, more stuff like this? Mm -hmm. We would love to hear your thoughts. Leave comments. Send should, us email, whatever you think. Should we dedicate segments to particular things? Like tonight we showed a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. Should we have a video of the day? One of the things we've thought about is maybe like Thursday nights, a movie review or something like that. Yeah. So we could always do things like that. If you're interested in those types of things, let us know. We'll start incorporating them into the show, and then you can uh, we'll just see the evolution of it. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much. We'll, I'm not exactly sure when the next episode of this comes out because we're still in the development phase, but just keep watching um, 
Probably the best place right now is YouTube.com slash mm-hmm. Jupiter Broadcasting. Or keep a keen eye on the Twitters and Facebooks yeah. for when we, when we do new ones. Up. And then once we get a regular schedule, we'll get it up on the calendar and we'll make yep. an announcement. All right. Well, until the next episode, thanks so much for watching.